Welcome to Out of Line Weekend Festival 2019. I'm here with uh, Xenoblite. So first things first, guys. Uh, how is the year 2019 treating you? Uh, we're very busy. That's how 2019 is treating us so far. Um, but yeah, we're enjoying it. You know, we're not complaining about being busy. But uh, that, that's the status, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it's treating us very good. Yeah. Very good. So uh, you are a very fresh band. You started in 2017. Uh, could you give us a quick 101 on uh, Xenoblite? Who and what is Xenoblite? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. We, we started in 2017, I think April. Yeah. Uh, and we spent the, the most part of that year just writing our, you know, debut album to have some music to, you know, show people. Um, so we focused on that for the first year, and I think we only played two shows. I think two or three shows. Yeah, it was two shows. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just primarily focusing on, on writing a good record and then getting that recorded, um, which we then finished. Um, Recorded up in Sweden uh, with Mike uh, Weed and Simon Johansson at the uh, Song and Sound recording. Um, and once we wrapped that, we could you know send that out, you know promote ourselves, you know get some gigs. And then from then on, it's just you know snowballed from then. So uh, and now we're here today. So yeah. Okay, so uh, basically every band has to have their own genre. So what is the genre of uh, Xenoblight? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, of everything. <laughs> yeah, well, we're, we're kind of taking an umbrella term and just calling it, you know, extreme metal, because we're playing thrash metal, obviously, because you know we love that. But we also play black. We also play death metal. We play um, speed at times. You know, we just mix that all together. You know, to make our own version of it. In a semi semi progressive yeah. tech way. And like Marika said, we have some guitarists who are exploring some melodies and some soundscapes um, that are a bit um, uh, uh, yeah, different. They're kind of different from you know what uh, most bands play today, and I think that's what you need to have as a new band. You need to have something that defines you as a band. And you, you can't just be a band that's, oh, you sound like those from the 80s, or you sound like that genre from that time. You need to find something that's, that's you. So that, I would say that's the biggest challenge, maybe. Finding something that makes your band unique. Yeah, uh, you already touched this, but uh, as said, the band is now two years young, I would say. Yes. And uh, debut album Procreation came out about a year ago, more or less. So, uh, what can you tell me about that album? You said you worked on it uh, a lot and wanted to make it as good as possible. So, tell me a bit yeah. about the process and uh, what do you think about the album now that it's been out for a while? Well, uh, I'm still quite proud of it, actually, um, but uh, can feel the itch to make something new already. Um, but it's uh, it's been a intense process because we wanted uh, we set a date for um, for the recordings uh, once we started the band and. Uh, we only had what three, three songs finished at that time, so we had uh, some months to finish the whole album. So we were rehearsing practice practically all the time and writing all the time until we had it all. Uh, it turned out quite all right, but uh, as a musician, I think you can always pinpoint stuff that you would have done differently. Uh, but I guess it's our chance for the next album to to the, do the few things differently. Yeah. Well, yeah, we've s supported uh, Procreation for the better part of a year now. Um, but we have started writing a couple of new songs here and there. And, and we can also feel that those songs that we're writing now, they are just a level above the songs on Procreation. So we're taking it a bit more slow this time. We, we, we're not Because before, before we released Procreation, we had no music out there. And if you're a band that has no music out there, how are you gonna you know, tell people to come to your shows and you know buy your stuff? So um, so we had a bit of a rush. Well, not a rush necessarily, but that was the main goal when we started the band. Just get the album done. Now we have an album. We're supporting that, and we're not you know in a need to finish a record right now within a month or two or three or the oh, next no, half no. year. We're just taking it slowly, and we're just creating the music. 
music as it comes to us, and then once we have, you know, the music for another album, which I would say is within a year from now, but who knows? Um, Okay, uh, you were touring with Hate Sphere, and now it yeah. seems like uh, your festival season starts from yeah. here in Berlin tonight. Yeah. So, uh, what kind of live band is Xenoblight? Uh, <laughs> I would say angry and intense. Uh, energetic. Energetic, yeah. yeah um, <laughs> I heard someone say that they were afraid to look me in the eye <laughs> while I'm on stage. So I think aggressive would be the um, most appropriate term. And uh, uh, we are aiming for it to be uh, intense as well for for the audience. So yeah, we're playing intense music. So when you come see it live, it should be intense. You know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and what makes a uh, gig good for you? Is it when you see that people are afraid to look you in the eye? Or <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the most important thing about a gig is how the people are receiving, how the people are experiencing uh, the show. So we had some uh, uh, arguments in the band. It was, oh no, I, I played that part wrong. It's like, no, f seriously, fuck that shit, because the most important part is if yeah. people enjoyed it and they won't they won't see the small mistakes you can make in a live setting so long as we're tight the rest of the time yeah. uh, the most impo important thing is uh, is the audience yeah I, w I would say that uh, as, as well because if we go in and play for a crowd that's you know standing still with their you know arms crossed um, that's not going to give us a lot of energy back to you know work with but if the crowd is rowdy jumping around mushing going absolutely bonkers you know they give that back to us so we do the same thing um but of all yeah so what the audience gives us back we're going to give that back tenfold so uh, yeah well, i have to i have to to say that uh, it's it's not because people sh is that they should mush and wall of no, death no, no, and all no, no, that, no. that that shit for us to enjoy a show I, no. For me, it's also about how they are responding between the songs, if, because some people prefer to stand and watch yeah. and not, like not me. yeah, and, and myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so you, you can't. Um, yeah, when I watch when I watch shows, I, I'm also the the one with my arms crossed, but I'm still enjoying it. Um, but uh, as long as you can feel that they're uh, into the show and that they're taking in the music, then yeah. it's a good show. Okay, and uh, as you told me, you just arrived in Berlin. Uh, is there some bands you are gonna see on this festival tonight, or do you have any time? Uh, well, yeah, obviously there's uh, Dark Tranquility, which I've been a fan of for uh, many years, so I'm looking forward to those. Um, but yeah, uh, the rest of the bands, uh, Blood Red Hourglass, I've, I've heard a little bit of them uh, before coming here, and I'm a bit excited to see them live, so yeah, and the rest of the bands sound, you know, interesting as well, so we're just, you know, ready for the ride now. Yeah, I think we're just gonna hang and see, yeah. see what now. happens tonight. <laughs> cool. Thank you so much, and uh, break a leg tonight. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.